Welcome everybody. Uh, we're here to talk about general safety and policies at the Library Innovation Studios. My name is Max Wheeler. I am the instructional designer for this project. Uh, so first and foremost, you know, come prepared. That means uh, no long sleeve t-shirts, uh, no long sleeve sweatshirts, anything with uh, you know, strings coming down if you're wearing a sweatshirt or have long jewelry. Uh, those need to be tucked inside. Uh, no food or drinks near the machines. That means bottled water, uh, anything that's open, just don't keep it near the equipment. And uh, I would also like to include that some of the equipment is very sensitive. For the most part, uh, this stuff is pretty robust and hard to damage. Uh, but do keep in mind that you know these aren't toys, they are equipment, and uh, you know take care of them. Uh, and finally, if you do have children present, just make sure to keep an eye on them. Uh, don't let them run amok in the area. General safety. So for first aid, uh, first aid kits need to be checked regularly. I had an experience at an old job where we didn't regularly check levels on the first aid kits, and when someone actually needed one for an emergency, uh, the entire kit was empty. So you know, just keep an eye on those. Make sure you check them every now and then, open them up, and replenish as needed. Uh, and also the emergency procedures for your building. So that's tornado, fire, storm, uh, any of those sorts of policies are going to trump anything that we have for this project. Uh, so make sure you know your proper exits and your proper locations for where to go for those events. Uh, small fires do occur uh, and they will, will be a natural result of the equipment that we're working with. Uh, if a small fire does occur, the first thing to do is always stop the piece of equipment. So for example, we're talking about the laser. That means open up the lid, which will stop the laser from cutting anymore. And 99% of the time, that's gonna stop the actual fire from occurring. Uh, the next step, if that doesn't work, uh, is to smother the flame. So if you have a small piece of plywood, uh, just put it on top and smother that flame to prevent it from spreading any farther. Uh, the next line of defense is a spray bottle of water anywhere that could potentially cause a fire, we will have a spray bottle of water, uh, use that. And then as a very last line of defense, uh, we do have fire extinguishers. They, uh, they will be electronic fire extinguishers, but again, they are the last line of defense because though although they won't damage the equipment, they're still kind of a pain to clean up from. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we don't use those unless we absolutely need to. And again, uh, the policies in your building on fire extinguishers uh, will trump anything that we tell you. So make sure to follow those uh, policies. Also sharps. Uh, several pieces of equipment and several hand tools we're providing do have uh, sharp edges on them. So please make sure when you are disposing of that equipment to do so properly. Uh, we have sharp containers. You'll recognize them. They look just like uh, the needle containers that they have in bathrooms for diabetics. Uh, please use those and don't dispose of them in the regular trash in the event that they could come loose and hurt somebody. Uh, cleanliness. A clean shop is a safe shop, and that's going to apply to all the equipment that we have here. Uh, you know, sometimes that does mean cleaning up the person before you use mess, uh, and you know, while unfortunate, that is just something that we need to do to make sure we keep things cleaned and well maintained. Uh, trash cans and recycling bins do exist, so please use them, uh, and just know all of the waste products that you're going to be generating from these different machines and what to do with them all. Some things are recyclable, some things aren't. Electronic files. So the computers that we're providing will wipe themselves at night. So if you save something on there right now, if you come back tomorrow, uh, it'll be gone. That means that if you're working on a project that's maybe gonna be ongoing or if you're prototyping something, you'll need to store that yourself. Uh, I'd recommend a cloud-based service that could be Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, uh, alternatively, there are <coughs> USB sticks that are available for purchase through this program. So if you do need one of those, uh, please talk to the front desk and they'll be able to get you taken care of. Trainings. Uh, trainings are going to, going to occur at the discretion of the library. Uh, so that means that we are providing the information on how to do the trainings and what those trainings entail. But as far as when they occur, uh, that's going to be really dependent on the specific library that we're talking about. Uh, so if you're curious about when trainings will occur, go ahead and talk to the front desk. Uh, they will have a binder of when all of the trainings occur and who's going to be doing them. Uh, each training does have a maximum number of attendees. We found that uh, you know, for certain machines, it may be most appropriate to only have four people in a given training. Uh, you know, after a certain point, if you've got 20 people in there, it's difficult to learn and ask questions. So we will cap those for specific machines and specific uh, 
devices. And uh, the actual procedure for that training is going to consist of walking over the standard operating procedure or the SOP for that piece of equipment. Uh, you'll learn how to active or how to safely work the machine, how to turn it off, turn it on, uh, what to do with your waste, that sort of stuff. Um, after the training, that standard operating procedure will be available at the machine as well as online. So if you need a refresher, you can check there. In the start menu of all of our computers, uh, we'll have links to all the different programs that you need to access this. Uh, so that is going to be available and just a really quick, easy reference on how to get there. So training entails a couple things. Like I said, you're going to learn how to safely operate the equipment and uh, understand some of the terminology and vocabulary that you're going to need in order to run this machine. Uh, by the end of training, you will not be an expert on the machine and you're not going to be able to produce world-class results on your first try. Uh, that is something that you'll have to kind of work on and experiment and try things out. Um, so, you know, don't get discouraged when the first time you go to use this equipment you're having a difficult time. That's okay, that happens for everybody. Uh, whenever I'm working on the laser, and I've been working with lasers for years, I still use a test piece. I never start with my final uh, piece that I'm actually working on because I want to make sure that I can practice and get it done correctly. Reserving machines. So, uh, most equipment is going to have to be reserved before you can actually use it. Uh, the reservations will be handled by the library staff, either via binder or electronic means, however the, the library sees fit to do that. Uh, some equipment may have limited reservations, which means that you can't reserve the laser for eight hours a day, or the 3D printer, you can't reserve that for two weeks straight. Uh, that's done in an effort to make sure that everyone gets a fair chance and is able to actually use all the equipment and no one's kind of hogging all the time. Uh, with this project, the libraries were all given an example policy, including general safety guidelines and project guidelines. Uh, please look at those before you use the equipment and uh, please know kind of what's in there. Uh, it's just general safety, legally stuff, but it, it's always good to take a read through that and know what it is. Uh, when you're working on projects, you may need some help at some time. Uh, in fact, I can almost guarantee you probably will. Uh, there are four steps to getting help. Step number one uh, is reading that standard operating procedure book, that SOP book. Uh, the majority of problems are going to be solved with that. Uh, step two, we are going to be including a form. Uh, we'll be using Slack for this form. Uh, step two is looking through the history on that form to see if anyone else has had a similar problem. Uh, step three is posting to that form if you weren't able to solve it with either the first two. Uh, and then step four, uh, I will have office hours five days a week from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. And during that time, I'll be reading through the forum, uh, getting up to date with things. And if there's an issue that we really can't solve anywhere else, uh, during that time, I can remote into computers, I can call people, I can email. Uh, that time every day is going to be set aside specifically for troubleshooting with this project. Uh, so you'll be able to reach me then. And again, those office hours are 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, but the best way to get a hold of me is via that forum, is via Slack. And that's all we have for today. Thanks.